A rebel base in the Republic of Congo is recruiting new soldiers. The rebel leader is cheering on the new soldiers and shouting slogans. All this was secretly being shot by journalists on video. All the rebels are armed. Unexpectedly, a white woman came out of their tent. As the journalists were taking her photo, the rebel leader spotted them and fired at them. The journalists ran away followed by the armed rebels. A journalist was shot in the leg and fell down. The one who was with him picked him up and took him in the car. Somehow they escaped from there. In the next scene we see Laura landing in the Republic of Congo. Elsa has come to the airport to receive her. Elsa works in a medical organization there. Laura showed her a photo on her cell phone of a white woman taken by journalists. Her name is Sarah. Laura is Sarah's sister. Laura came to the Congo to find Sarah, who has not been heard from for two years. Elsa and Sarah used to work together. Elsa handed Sarah's things to Laura. When Laura looked through Sarah's books, she saw a number and a photo of someone called Sven. No one from Madrid would help Laura find her sister-in-law, so she has to find a private sector. The next day Laura meets Sergio, a businessman. Sergio looked at the map and said, The journalists took the photo of your sister in a place called Warunga. It is one of the most dangerous places in the Congo. It is a place between Goma and Walakau. There is an area of Colton Mines. The most brutal rebels are there. And the most bloodthirsty group is the ASRDC under. He is known as a hawk. Sergio showed his photo to Laura. Laura sees the photo and says he has my sister with him. Hawk's modus operandi is recruiting children from villages into the army. When the children grow up, they become loyal to him. That is his strength. Laura asked Sergio, what guarantee do I have that my sister will be found? Sergio said, this is Africa no guarantees here. Sergio gives an envelope and says I have my conditions to help you with this. Call me if you agree. Laura pays Sergio, and then makes a condition that Laura will come with him when he goes to Goma to find Sarah. Sergio reluctantly agreed. Sergio said it would be at his own risk. I will buy the flight ticket today, and we will go to Goma today. That night, Sergio sent a voice message to Laura that the flight to Goma had broken down. They got a seat on the health minister's flight, but only one person can go on it, so he is going first. Laura should come later with the rest of the team, that's the voice message. Laura met Sven, Sarah's boyfriend. He said Sarah had taken up this job voluntarily. At that time, Laura saw the health minister's speech being broadcast live on TV. Laura asked Sven, is this the place where the minister is preaching? Sven said yes, it is right here. Laura realizes that Sergio is trying to cheat on me. When Laura phoned him, he said I was preparing to go to Goma. Soon Laura and Sven went to the restaurant. Sergio was there. He took her to the kitchen and said, there's an explanation for everything. I'm dealing with a television crew in Belgium to do a documentary on the Colton mine where your sister is believed to be. I will take you with them. Laura says I want my money back. I am not coming with you. Sven and Laura decide to go to Goma to find Sarah on a chartered flight to Colton for traders. They continue their journey by plane. At last, they saw the runway to land. But the place was occupied by the rebels. They are armed and waiting to hijack the plane. When the plane was about to land on the runway, they shot and killed the marshaller, and the pilot saw this and took off the plane. Rebels shot down the plane. A bullet hit Sven in the leg, but the plane does not crash, and they escape. Sven was treated at the NGO hospital. A foreign woman informs Laura that there is a boy who used to work in the mine where Sarah is. She goes to meet him, and his name is Jamir. He recognized Laura because Sarah had shown him a photo of her. Sven tells him to take Laura to mine where Sarah is. If you do, we will give you a lot of money. But he refused the offer and he did not want to go there. Laura decides to go alone. Sven says Congo is too dangerous and you can't go there without him. Laura says I can go whether he is there or not. They have to travel a long way to get to Sarah's place and the first step is to cross a river. They waited for the boat. Jamir was there waiting for them. Jamir decided to find Sarah with her. Jamir and Laura set off on a boat to find Sarah. On the boat. Jamir tells Laura about the time when General Engunda came to our village and broke into my house and told me to shoot my father and mother. Hearing that, Laura asked you obeyed it. He said no, but the other children in the village did. They no longer have families. The boat traveled a long way down the river and reached a jetty. There was an army check post there. Laura and Jamir stood in the queue for security clearance. Laura was allowed to leave, but the soldiers did not let Jamir go. They subjected him to a body search and detained him. Laura bribes the army officer to release Jamir, and they let him go. All the belongings of both of them had been taken by the army, and they were walking through an unknown and undeveloped town. Finally, they got a truck to go. They traveled to the most dangerous part of the Congo to find Sarah. On the way, they saw a group of people being shot by rebels. People are running to escape from them. The people climbed into the truck to escape. 
Rebels shot the truck driver dead. People ran out of the truck. Somehow, Jamir got out of the truck with Laura in a rush, hiding among the trees. After walking a short distance from there, they saw an old building. They went there. It was a church. The priest told them that when there is trouble outside, people from the villages come here with their families. I will tell you when all the problems are calm, and then you can go. Father told her during dinner. Two years ago, on a night like this, a ten-year-old boy came here to escape abduction. I gave him food and a blanket to sleep. Hearing all this, Jammer stayed away from there. The priest looked at the back of his neck and saw a mark. The priest asked him something in his local language. Hearing that, he angrily said something to the priest in their language. And then he left. The next morning, the priest prepared the vehicle for them to leave and said, I will drop you off at the nearest post. Jamir and Laura are traveling down a red dirt road in the middle of the forest in the priest's vehicle. On their way they were intercepted by armed rebels. Immediately, Jamir and Laura hid inside the vehicle out of their sight. The priest got out of the vehicle to speak to them. Jamir and Laura were watching all this from the cover of the vehicle. The priest spoke to them. They hit priest in the stomach with the butt of the gun. Seeing this, Jamir and Laura ran from the cover of the vehicle into the forest without seeing the rebels. They walked a long way through the forest. Laura asked Jammer what the priest told you yesterday. He said, I don't know. Laura asked, are you a rebel? Have you killed people? I have the right to know. He said, what do you want to know? You need me. He said and walked forward. Laura was bitten by a snake in the forest. Jammer carried her on his shoulders and took her to a village. She was placed in a hut there. The lady of the house examined her snake bite wound. Her name is Massacre. She prayed and placed a black stone on the wound. Jammer stood outside the house feeling depressed. Laura looked outside scared to death and saw Jamir. Laura survived the snake bite. Massacre and her daughter and Jamir came to meet Laura as she recovered. Laura thanked to Massacre for saving her life. Massacre presents a necklace to Laura. Laura happily hugged her. Meanwhile, Jamir noticed danger lurking on the outskirts of the village. It didn't take him long to realize that rebels were coming to the village. He ran and informed the village. By the time he reached the village, the rebels had launched an attack. They killed the villagers by cutting them with swords and shooting them. Jammer hides on the roof of the house to escape with Laura. Then Massacre came out of the house and searched for her daughter. At that time two rebels forcibly took her home at gunpoint. Seeing all this, Jammer and Laura are hiding on the roof. They could hear Massacre screaming. Then Laura covered her ears. At that time, the Massacre's daughter came there in search of her mother. One of them grabbed her, and the other brought Massacre from the house, then handed the daughter a gun and told her to shoot her mother. All this is watched helplessly by Jamir and Laura from the top of the roof. The daughter was crying because she could not shoot her mother. Then one of the rebels pointed at her and said that if she did not shoot, he would kill her. Then Massacre said to her daughter, shoot me, or they will kill you. The daughter had no choice, she shot Massacre. She was taken away by the rebels as she cried over her dead mother. Jamir and Laura witnessed all these brutal acts. The rebels took away the children of that village by force. Laura couldn't bear to be sad. She cried looking at the dead body of Massacre gave to her final kiss. Then suddenly a rebel came to Laura with a sword. He was saying something to her. He put the sword to Laura's neck. Then he started touching the breast with the sword. Laura fell back in extreme fear, and he grabbed her. With all her strength she tried to get away. At that time, Jammer came and first slashed Rebel's leg and then slashed his neck. He pulled away from Laura. Jammer slashed him with sword. Then he said to Laura, come on, let's go. Jammer walked holding Laura's hand. When Laura looked around, she saw dead bodies. Laura walked through the forest behind Jamir who was walking in front of him holding a sword. Laura asks him, weren't the boy from the village that the priest mentioned? You were a rebel, weren't you? Jamir kept walking without saying anything. Laura understands Jamir's past. Then the UN convoy came through the forest road. Jamir and Laura get into the vehicle and go to the base camp of the UN but at the camp gate, UN officials did not let Jamir inside. Laura said he was with me, but he had to stay out. After a while, Laura came out to see Jamir. Then she said, I am going back. I can't find Sarah. The officer here has made the flight ready for me. There is an institute in Goma for guys like you. You should go there. Hearing this, Jamir says are you going back? Laura gives him some money. And the necklace given by Massacre then says you have to start a new life and never go back to the forest. Jamir said I don't want to go to the forest. Finally, he thanked her and left. After Jamir left, Laura was very sad. She whimpered and cried. Then Sergio came there and saw her. He said, he going to Varunga with the Belgium TV team. I have got information that your sister Sarah is alive there. You can come with us if you want. She didn't think twice about going with him to find her sister. They set out on a journey. In the forest they saw people going to work in the Colton mine. 
The Belgium team captured their video on camera. One of them said, The rebels came to the village and hacked a boy to death in front of his parents. His mother was raped. His father was cut to pieces with a sword and a piece put into his mother's mouth. At nightfall, under the protection of armed guards, they sit outside and talk. After a while, Sergio and Laura came out of the tent and looked around. They saw the guards dead, and a group of rebels led by General Ngunda's commander Omar and team pointing guns at them. The rebels brought everyone to their knees at gunpoint. After a while, Batista, the head of the army, came and asked tell me any reason not to kill you. Journalists said, we came to do report about General Ngunda. Batista said, the general has been fighting for the same thing for years. Why are you reporting now? The media person said that our audience is interested in seeing it. Batista asked why you came here. Didn't you come to occupy Colton Mine? Start executing them all, he ordered. Then Sergio said we came to tell the world what a great leader and strategist General Ngunda is. If your enemies see our report on the screen, the general's leadership will get more power. A female rebel beats Laura with the butt of gun. All of them were taken hostage by the rebels. She opened her eyes when she heard the call of Laura. It's Sarah. Laura asked Sarah, dreaming or is it real? Sarah said it's real. Try to rest. They have been brought to the rebels' main mine. Laura is placed in one place and the men in another. After a while, Sarah brought Laura to her for a medical examination. During the examination, Laura asked Sarah, You've been missing for two years. What happened to you? I couldn't believe you're dead. You don't know how much I've suffered. Sarah said, everything was so quick. One day the rebels didn't come to rape or recruit, they wanted a doctor. I did not know until I got here that the wounded officer was General Ngunda. Then one of the rebels comes and says Batista is waiting for you. Batista calls them to mine and explains. Batista said to Sergio, this is Colton Mine, controlled by General Ngunda. There is another mine there, we will go there later. Yes, you and I will do good business. The Belgium TV team is capturing everything on camera. Sarah is dressing the mine worker's wound. Suddenly, there was an explosion on one side of the mine. Sarah immediately ran and attended the injured workers. Laura was shocked to see all this. Batista fired into the air to calm the scene, and the people continued their work as if nothing had happened. Sarah says to Laura, you shouldn't have come here. Laura says I came for you. Sarah said I can't leave here. Laura said they can't make you stay here. Sarah said until I got here, there was no one who could treat malaria or amputate a leg, attend birth. I feel that my life makes sense here. Hearing that, Laura asked what you got in return. Saving the life of a murderer. Sarah said yes. I got the opportunity in exchange for saving his life. Laura said, couldn't you have called or texted? Sarah said I could not communicate with anyone. That is the condition of Angunda. Sergio tells Laura that we have a plan to get out of here. I have spoken to the Belgium TV team and they agree. Angunda will attend a weapons handover ceremony for the new soldiers tonight. Everyone's attention will be there. This is our only chance to escape. The satellite telephone we use to communicate is inside Batista's barracks. Sergio gave Laura the code to coordinate. Sarah and the Belgium TV team are surrounded by armed rebels all the time. The new soldier ceremony is going on. White powder is applied to the face of everyone. After that everyone should remove their body ornaments. When Laura looked at the necklaces being exchanged, she saw the necklace she had given to Jamir. She realizes Jamir has come there. After that a mark was put on the neck of the newly arrived soldiers. Sergio came to humor and said our camera has a small problem and we need to recharge it from the battery in Batista's barracks. Omar agreed. Laura was assigned to it along with two rebels. Laura went to Batista's barracks to recharge the battery. The rebels who came with her left the barracks. Then Laura picked up the satellite telephone. She called on the phone. Then Sarah came to the barracks. She tells Laura that things are not what you think. Ngamba is dead. I killed him. I went to many places with him and saw many horrors. Then I spread the infection to him. On his last night, when he could not even move, I said in his ear, You will rot in hell. Battista knew what was going on. He threatened to kill me if anyone found out that Angunda was dead. If Battista finds out you know about this, he won't let you go alive. Laura says we both will leave here tonight. I have contacted UN troops. They are going to rescue us. Sarah says I can't come from here I am useful here. Omar listens to me. I know I can change things. I need some time. Laura said how do you know Sarah? What are the boys on the other side going to learn? To hate and kill. And one day they will hate themselves when they come out. They will continue to kill in their rage. They will hold grudges about what happened to them. Die or kill this will be their life. At that time, Laura remembered Jamir. She says surely he has come to take revenge. He has come here to kill the hawk. Sarah says General Ngunda is dead. Laura says Jamir doesn't know that. On the other hand, weapons are being handed over to new soldiers. 
Then Jammer came from behind the tent with his face painted, thinking it was a hawk. Jammer stabbed him with a knife from behind and cut his throat. He fell down, spewing blood. Sarah and Laura rush in to stop him. Battista was conducting the ceremony because he wanted to keep General Ngunda's death a secret. Half alive, he asked Omar to call Sarah. Sarah came. She tried to save his life. Battista told Sarah if I die like a general, I will kill you. A female rebel who was there heard this. Battista died in the next moment. Omar suddenly leaves with Laura and Sarah. Omar says there will be an explosion here if it comes out that the general is dead. The female rebel told Yumer that you helped the whites. She comes out and tells the others that the general is dead. He was killed by the whites. On hearing this, the rebels shot and killed the Belgian TV crew. There is an ongoing tension in the mine. Rebels are shooting everyone. Laura and Sarah are hiding. Unfortunately, they were discovered by the rebels. The rebels were about to drag Laura away and kill her when Jamir came there. Then he said, I am the one who killed the general. All the rebels turned on him and tied him up and beat him brutally. Sarah and Laura helplessly watch all this. Laura looked at him with tears in her eyes. Jammer was also looking at her. The next moment he was shot dead. Meanwhile, Omar came and rescued them from there. Sergio came with a vehicle. As Laura, Sarah and Sergio escaped in the vehicle, the rebels shot them. A bullet hit Yumer's body. Jammer's dead body is being raised by the rebels. Sarah and Laura reach the mountain top, and Omar is badly injured. A helicopter appeared above. Yumer's condition was very bad, and Sarah was taking care of him. The soldier who came down from the helicopter said that Omar and the rebel with him cannot come. Sergio says don't say that we have to take them to hospital. But the soldier didn't allow it. He gave them some medicine and asked for forgiveness. Omar was completely unconscious. Laura tells Sarah, let's get out of here. Laura and Sergio board the helicopter. Sarah tells Laura I can't leave Omar here. I have many things to do here. Laura said, Sarah, please come on. Then Sarah said you must tell our father that I loved him. Sarah gave a notebook to Laura and said that all the bad and good things are in this book. You must keep this. Laura begged Sarah, I need you. But Sarah said goodbye. The copter took off with them. In the next scene we see a smiling Laura among the children in the Congo. She walked along the river and came to a graveyard. A boy pointed out a grave to her. Laura placed a book on top of the grave and on the cover of the book there was written Sarah's notebook. Laura touched Sarah's grave and smiled. The movie ends here. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notification so you can watch more video like this. Thank